So chances are nine out of 10 times you probably hear me on this channel talking about bags that I have or want and rarely do I regret a purchase. And I don't think I've really talked about ones that I regretted before on this channel. But today I'm going to actually be talking about the one out of 10 bags, the 10% of the times that I buy a bag and they didn't actually quite make the cut. I have five bags that I've bought and since a return. And by the way, this does not count bags that I've since sold, which are obviously few and far between anyway, but I think it's worth making that distinction because obviously bags that I've sold are ones I've had still for a significant amount of time and I did get a lot of joy out of them. This is just about bags that I literally bought and then maybe a few days later, decided to return for one reason or another that I will get into now. And I will start obviously, number one, top of the alphabet, we've got Celine. And I don't think I've ever talked about Celine on my channel before. I don't think a lot of you will even know that I was interested in Celine, let alone bought a bag. But yes, I did buy a bag and this was a very, very popular bag. It was none other than the Celine luggage tote. Who remembers how big this bag was back in the day, maybe almost, oh gosh, it must be almost 10 years ago now. And I think that plus the Phantom was Celine's heyday. Obviously they've since done a very big rebrand now and a lot of people are buying more into them. But back in the day when I was just starting out into my luxury handbag obsession and my fashion journey and I just I guess came into some money because I had what I thought was a high flying job and a high flying pay to match. I thought, do you know what? I want to buy a bag, not actually for me, but one actually for my mum. And I wanted to pick a bag that was very well known, very classic looking, and obviously it happened to be very, very popular. So I think that kind of psychological psyops, you know, that whole kind of marketing subconsciously with all of the influencers wearing it, with all the advertisements and with how hyped and popular it was and yet also similarly hard to get because you had to go on like waiting lists and things like that, it was always sold out. Uh, I thought this would be a really good bag to buy for her and surprise her with. I think I went into, was it like a Selfridges or something? By that point, I did not know yet about Harrods. And I got one which was, for some reason, I decided a tricolor version would be the best one. I can't remember the exact colors. I think it was like a neutral tricolor. I'll try and throw up a picture of the closest that I remember it being because I don't even think I took a picture of it but obviously it did not last long because I bought this bag and I was like yes this is great she's gonna absolutely die with excitement and I think it was around £2,000 which almost 10 years ago that was a lot of money for a bag I mean obviously nowadays we don't bat nine lid to bags that are like nine or ten grand like the Chanel and Hermes of the world but back almost a decade, you know, 2000 pounds, a lot of money. I thought, wow, you know, I'm a big baller spending all this money on one bag. But I took this to my mum and I gave it to her and she was actually horrified. She was horrified, not only because I think it was a tricolor, which I don't know if she liked that kind of vibe, but also because she just thought, what a waste of money on from your first paycheck to buy it on this bag. After that, my mum kind of like sat down with me. She was like, look, let's spend this money on something you'll enjoy or something we can enjoy as a family and whatnot. And she said she would just never use it because I think it was like the medium size. It was quite big and bulky. It's a heavy bloody bag. And it was like this mixture. I remember now it's like a mixture of like leathers and suede and whatnot. So it's just a lot going on. I don't really know what I was thinking when I was picking that bag, but clearly I was just in with all the positive emotions. So long story short, returned that bag. The sales associate who sold it to me um, was also the one, sadly, that received the return and was very, very upset. Uh, you could just see her face. So she was happy to see me because she thought I was gonna buy something else, but then as soon as she realized it was a return, she instantly looked so, so sad. I felt so bad for her. And thankfully I got a full refund, which I think is actually uncommon nowadays in luxury fashion houses because they give you credits now, which is obviously not what you want for a bag that you spend thousands on. But lesson learned, don't buy handbags that are gifts that are very practical, have a lot going on. We just do not need that kind of stress to return something so high ticket and high value in our lives. Now onto handbag number two that I returned, and this is one that I've actually covered on my channel before. So some of you may have been, if you were OG subscribers, part of, I suppose, the polling process of whether I should return this bag. And obviously I did return the bag, but it's actually the Fendi Baguette. 
and I actually really like the Fendi baguette so this is by no means me saying I returned it because I don't like it I do think it's very classic and I really think the Zika print versions of the Fendi baguette in particular are super classy I love that the vintage ones are coming back in style because I do think it's a silhouette and style that will remain timeless and obviously with my experience with this Fendi baguette that I'll talk about it's not one that I'm rushing to buy anytime soon but anyway I've covered it obviously in a separate video which you can see a lot of the detail but long story short it was locked down I had a lot of money to spend as did most people rightly or wrongly and I think it was coming up to Christmas I wanted to buy myself a Christmas present so that was my excuse <laughs> so I went online because obviously you couldn't go in store and I think I bought my YSL my Saint Laurent Lulu bag online as well during that same time so I thought you know what I have pretty good luck buying things online I know what to look for I do my research and I also really liked the look of the baguette for many many months and years so I thought you know what buy yourself something special treat yourself it's Christmas went on Harrods website because by that point I had great loyalty with them and it just made sense I think you could also like click and collect potentially oh no there wasn't click and collect just yet but they would deliver straight to your home and that was totally free of charge so I went onto their website and I bought a beautiful bag it was a well I thought it was beautiful on the pictures anyway it was this very rare kind of iridescent multicolored baguette bag I'll throw up a picture or reference that video because I thought it was the best thing that I've ever seen and putting aside the fact that nowadays I would revert back and be like Mel what are you doing that is a bag that you will never wear it's crazy colors it had like pinks and blues and purples it looked like a evening sunset or something it was lovely colors but I've since learned my lesson around the colours that are a bit wild, like the tricolour bag, this theme here. It's past Mel, thought it would be a great idea, be a bit wild, try something new. So I decided to pull the trigger and I bought this bag. And then a week later, or maybe just a few days later, because Harrods was really good and the delivery was very quick, I got this box. I couldn't wait to unravel it. In fact, it was something that I was so excited about, I even went ahead and obviously filmed a video about it with you guys live. And you can see my reaction when I opened the bag live, it was just disappointment the quality i just thought was lackluster the colors were cheap and tacky looking uh, for some reason i didn't see that it would be so i guess what's the word like matte the colors i thought they would have this sheen to it they didn't have that and basically i just decided to return it because i always feel like if you don't love something it just won't work for you if i just always stand by the philosophy of when there is doubt there is no doubt and i just thought for like about £3,500 or thereabouts it's just not worth keeping a bag like that even if everybody in the comments were telling me how beautiful it is because I think a lot of people said it was nice but I didn't feel it in my heart and I don't like wasting money at least for beautiful bags and so I instead returned that and I bought and said a bag actually for my mum a Bulgari Serpenty Forever shoulder bag which she actually did like and does use and was a lot cheaper actually than this Fendi bag but yeah that's definitely a lesson learned in terms of the bold prints and whatnot and also I suppose horrendous price tags just because it is a bag that is very well known like the baguette doesn't mean you should just buy into that trend I just found it super flimsy it just didn't look right it looked way too bulky and ultimately it just wasn't very me now onto bag number three and this is actually now that I think about it they all have a similar theme around the colors because this one I, I don't know what I was thinking I, I thought I could make this work and this is the LV the Louis Vuitton on the go beach tote now some of you might be confused because I do have a beautiful on the go tote it's the 1854 print and I absolutely love it and it is my work bag it is my also workhorse bag because it fits so much and it, it's just stunning it's super sophisticated and again yada 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 I've covered it in many videos but some of you may not know because it was in one video but not like I suppose something that I talked about all the time perhaps I actually was considering the on the go uh, by the pool collection tote bag again beautiful sunset colors I don't know I just saw that collection one year I think it was a couple of years ago now and I thought it was the best thing that I've ever seen I thought I would live that kind of I don't know literally sipping like a margarita by a sun lounger in the Caribbean vibe with this tote bag and I wanted the uh, GM size because I wanted it to also fit not just peach essentials but also laptop and I thought you know the price point's really good it's about like two thousand pounds maybe or a little bit less 
and I thought this is what I want for my birthday because I think it was two years ago. Again, all of these things I buy around occasion so I can justify it to myself. Actually, it was during the time that lockdown was kind of relaxing so I could actually go into store and peruse the bags and just make sure that I was extra, extra firm on my decision. So I checked it out, thought it looked great on the shelf, brought it down. I did have a little bit of a look inside and I thought, oh gosh, the inside's not uh, leather or indeed any kind of like reinforced fabric at least or a microfiber lining it was just weird i don't want to i don't even know what it was it was just a weird kind of polyester or silky pretend silk fabric and it was a very light interior so if any makeup marks or grubby hand stains are on there you'd be able to see it and then my mum came with me and actually she was thinking is this really what you want the quality looks a little bit rubbish and you know is, is it really going to be something that you can use for work because i did use that as an excuse like oh it could be a beach tote but it could also be a work tote i put it on order because at the time they only had models in they didn't have the actual bag for sale but essentially I could put the order and then I can come back in a few days when they'd notified me. So they'd fast forward a few days, notified me, came back in and I was just walking around the store because I told them, you know, I'm here to collect my bag. They said, you know, please wait, madam, and you know, just have a look around while we get it for you. And when I was looking around, I actually saw the 1854 print version. I tried on that 1854 bag and I thought, this is way better. It's got a black microfiber interior, strong reinforced outer. Yes, the outer is not canvas. It's kind of this like reinforced fabric, I suppose, but it was rigid, firm, rock hard, thicker, funnily enough, than the By The Pool collection one, which is the thinnest canvas anywhere. And I know canvas nowadays from Louis Vuitton is not the best quality. So, you know, it was very, very thin and flimsy. And ultimately I think the 1854 one looked way classier. Plus it wouldn't patina like the straps of the By The Pool collection one would. So there's all these factors going on. So I decided actually last minute to do a little switcheroo and I got actually the uh, 8054 print version at a lower price. They even refunded me money, which why do you ever get a refund from Louis Vuitton? And the police report, I still very much use this bag today and I use it for traveling and work and whatnot. It is wonderful and I have no issues with the quality, whereas I think it would be a very different story and a very different type of video that I'd be making today had I kept that bag. So definitely lesson learned around the colors front and also just, I suppose, canvas bags nowadays from Louis Vuitton are just not it. They're just not up to scratch that. I guess we were used to years ago. Now we're on to bag number four and this is a brand that I don't think any of you will have seen coming because this is a little bit of a kind of avant-garde hipster brand and that is Off-White. I actually bought a bag from this brand which I suppose is more known for their streetwear but I suppose they're getting more popular in terms of their bags because I think a lot of luxury brands like your Chanel's and Hermes are outpricing a lot of people who would otherwise buy that look and feel. And they're kind of getting into this middle market where I think a lot of other luxury fashion houses or the price increases are moving increasingly away from. So the bag that I'm specifically talking about here is the Off-White Jitney bag. It's because, and I'm not surprised, it's got a very classic silhouette. It's a very trapeze shaped bag. It's like the Coco Handle the Chanel Coco Handle, or the Louis Vuitton Capucines, or the Hermes Kelly. However, a fraction of the price. I think the Jitney at the time, when I was initially considering it, perusing it, was around 500 pounds. It's definitely a lot more nowadays. For a big size, you're probably looking at a thousand pounds or something, maybe even more. I can't remember actually when I specifically looked at it. It was definitely before I bought my Coco Handle. So there's that video on my channel. So maybe like five, six years ago now and I was lusting after a very classic looking bag. I think I thought it was a pipe dream that I would get a Coco Handle or something, so I was looking at the Jitney as an alternative just to see if I could satiate that desire for this bag. And so I ordered it on Louise Via Roma. I think there was a discount code or something because Off-White is not one of those um, exempt luxury fashion houses from the site. So I think I found a discount code. I saw it was like a neutral or a white color, but I bought it in this like small, medium size. And then it arrived and I opened the box, really, really excited, the dust bag, and I my heart just sank because I just saw it and it was just so low quality. It was so flimsy and it looked and felt cheap compared to my other bags. And by that point, I didn't have a lot of Chanel bags. So I only had a couple to go from at the time. And I just compared them, the look and the feel, and I just thought, this is just not what I want. 
and even though the price was cheap, it was expensive for the fact that I had used this money for a bag that I was not realistically going to be, you know, wearing a lot for the fact that I could have saved that and bought either something else or just continued to save that money. I just remember filming it in the mirror and thinking it just looks so shiny and fake and it's just so boxy, but not in a good way. And even the turn lock closure, which is like the arrows, just, it, I think it like scratched when I turned it. So it didn't really feel nice. And the leather was so boxy and shiny, but also in a way, very, very delicate, that if you were to run your nail along it the wrong way, it would dent. So all that being said, I returned this bag. I got my money back, thankfully. And I just held out until one day I got the opportunity to buy the Coco handle. So all things worked out in the end. I love my Coco handle. It fits so much. It's super quality, super elegant. And I'm just so glad that I listened to my gut and I returned it for a bag that I definitely use a whole lot more and will keep for many years, if not indefinitely. And now onto the final bag, number five. And this one is sadly a Saint Laurent bag, which as you all know, I rave about my Saint Laurent Lulu bag a lot, as do most people, because I find it to be super versatile and durable and a really good price point. I think Saint Laurent bags are really good investments or starter bags for a lot of people wanting to venture into luxury fashion, but you know, want a good reputable fashion house without the crazy price tags that you're getting nowadays. So. It's a real shame that actually the sunset bag is the bag in question that I actually returned because a lot of people rave about this bag as well. But sadly for me, I just found that to be quite cheap and tacky looking when I bought it. I think this is, again was a bag that I considered before I actually found the Lulu and I was looking at a nice YSL kind of wallet on chain looking bag but with way more functionality obviously than wallet on chains i have obviously opinions on wallet on chains and i think i was looking on louise via room and they were doing again like a discount or something and i think they were part of the promotion at the time nowadays i don't think you get ysl involved in those because i think they are now elevated and they can afford i suppose to be picky and choosy about which promotions they do so they rarely do them nowadays but at the time I think I had maybe like a 10% off and I thought that was the best thing ever. So I saw a sunset bag, it was pale pink and it looked really nice. It looked quite roomy as well, it looked like a medium size. So I bought it, I think it was like 1,300 at the time, uh, three or four years ago. And then it arrived and the same thing happened, similar to the Jitney bag response. I just thought it looked a little bit too shiny, tacky looking, boxy. It also looked a lot bigger than the actual capacity, which I found so strange because I'd always seen and heard a lot of rave reviews about how spacious this bag was. But when I put it on, it looked almost like too small for my body as well. It just looked a little bit comical. So I thought, you know what, for a bag that's like, what, 1,200, 1,300, that's just too much money to spend on something that will not even properly fit my phone. I think I always do the phone test and it was a little bit of a squeeze, so I immediately thought it's just not gonna work. It's a very cute baby pink, but it almost looked a little bit like childish, and so that plus the fact that it didn't fit anything, that it just didn't really look right on my body, and I was probably getting it more because it was a bag that everyone raved about, and there's that kind of subconscious nudging that happens when you look into bags. I just thought, best just return it and reevaluate my bag choice sleep sound line and thankfully again a few months later i found the lulu bag and i'm so glad that i bought that and i've unboxed that obviously live on my channel as well and i was very happy with what i saw but anyways those are the five bags that i've returned and why clearly i don't have that many bags that i returned if it's only five um compared to other people who literally i swear go onto their channels and buy and sell things almost on the weekly or monthly at this stage. And some people that claim that they don't buy their bags to resell, it's just so funny because I'll watch the odd video here and there of them saying that they love a bag only to see on my feed later down the line that they're going to sell it or doing a luxury vlog sale on their channel. And look, each to their own, but I personally don't have the patience to keep buying and returning bags. But with that being said, I'm sure a lot of you will be thinking, Mel, do you regret these purchases? Obviously, I'd like to save myself the time and the money, just the general hassle of returning these items and being disappointed, but overall I feel like it was probably a good thing that I experienced it's these kind of incidents and these failures because they taught me valuable lessons about what I do and don't like, my personal style, 
what has longevity in my collection and clearly it wasn't any of these bags doesn't mean it will be for the same for you or for others but i noticed that i work quite well with the classic silhouettes of the chanel's or you know i do have other bags from other fashion houses but they all have the same kind of look and feel in a way and they're just in materials and colorways that would be the most long wearing the most classic i'm pretty good i think at knowing what i like what works for me and i don't think i've actually returned a bag for many many years either which way i think it all worked out for the best in the end i love my bag collection at the moment i'm always iterating it but i feel like these are all very valuable lessons for me to have but i would love to know if there are any bags that you regret buying that were in your collection or ones that you're potentially hoping to sell in your collection as of yet but i will just leave this video right here thank you as always for watching and i'll catch you in my next one